Fire and smoke choke the skies the morning after a massive catastrophic earthquake rocks Izmit, Turkey, killing thousands and trapping even more. At daybreak, the devastation comes to light. Fire rages, homes are flattened. The largest rescue effort in Turkey's history begins. Emergency personnel from all over the globe have come to help, including some of the world's finest. They're down in here right now, but we have one up here. A renowned search and rescue team from Fairfax, Virginia has rushed to the scene. They set up a command post and immediately hit the ground running. It's been two days since the quake, but many of these rubble heaps are still hiding living victims. Determining which ones to search is an overwhelming task for team leader Dan Bickham. In every direction you look, there was a collapsed structure, and some of them look like just uh, big rubble piles. They press on, never knowing that they are working towards one rescue attempt that will test the limits of their skill, endurance, and emotions. Once you get on the ground, we're ready to roll, regardless of how tired you are, and we're going to work as long as it takes to get live victims out. They work day and night, pulling people out of hell on earth. By day four, there are fewer lives to save. But just as they reach the point of exhaustion, an urgent call goes out. Dan radios a crew to the side of a collapsed home where a young boy is heard crying. Okay, we have a uh, confirmed with the listening device victim. A relative had come over and said they thought they heard the noise underneath this slab. A distraught man tells rescuers his eight-year-old nephew, Emmy Yazgi, is trapped somewhere in the rubble. Dan and his team scour the surface trying to pinpoint the kid's exact location. But the rubble pile is too deep for anyone to look through. They're running out of time. Dan calls for their only hope, a tiny camera attached to a 20-foot pole that can peek and listen for potential survivors. Okay, take that camera and rotate it around this way. 22-year vet Tommy Griffin is called on to operate the search cam and find the boy who's been trapped for four days. Take it down, take it down, take it down. What he sees takes his breath away. I stuck a search cam in the hole and actually saw this eight-year-old boy laying in his bed. And the only thing holding this slab up was the post on the bed. Little Emmy is sandwiched between two concrete slabs, but he's alive. Getting to him looks easy, but the picture Tommy's seeing tells him that his colleagues must move gingerly. A slight shift in the rubble could crush young Emmy. Once we did start a cutting operation, there was uh, quite a bit of dust being generated. I could see that you know he was inhaling this dust. Tommy has seen it all. But this rescue has him fighting back tears. The helpless boy reminds him of his own son. It, it kind of hit home a little bit. He had been in there for four days. The biggest thing I was concerned about was dehydration. Emmy hasn't had any food, water, or human contact for four days. There's no telling how much longer he'll hang on. We were trying to make sure that he didn't get any more scared than he already was. They dig a hole just wide enough for one of their smaller rescuers to crawl inside. Everyone holds their breath. And then, a moment of pure relief and joy. Little Emmy is lifted up and out of harm's way. It was like a human chain where we passed the boy out of the hole up, into, up to the waiting ambulance. And uh, I think everybody got a, got a chance to get their hands on him. And, you know, it was really kind of a rewarding uh, experience. But as rewarding as it is for them, it doesn't compare to the enormous joy and gratitude the boy's uncle feels. It, it was a real nice feeling when we brought that little guy out and he wasn't hurt. And found out that a couple hours after they had gone to the hospital and been rehydrated and fed, he was out playing soccer with his cousins. Emmy was one of the lucky ones. The quake, which measured 7.8 on the Richter scale, injured almost 30,000 and cost 6,000 their lives. But those numbers would have been higher if it weren't for the team from Fairfax who crossed borders and went beyond the call of duty. It was pretty exhilarating, that particular mission, uh, in particular because we had some saves. and uh, I, I felt really good about it when we got home.